Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint's Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point. Now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We are coming at you on April 28, 2021. Uh, it's a pretty crazy time to be alive, uh, but uh, uh, there you go. <laughs> now let me introduce you to our panel before we get going on the topic. Upper left-hand corner, we have uh, Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. In our upper right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I will be your host today. So let's jump into it. We're going to talk about education today. And uh, one of the things that kind of caught uh, caught Leon's eye, actually, and so it got, it, now it's stuck in all of our heads, <laughs> is, is education. Uh, there's an issue with equity in uh in mathematics and you know i, I tell you it, it to me i don't know that doesn't really add up you know math is math <laughs> and uh, but uh you know we're we're gonna look at this and see if this woke uh ideology is really subtracting from kids um I, i'm gonna share with you an image before we get going just so you kind of have a sense of of what we're talking about here. So um, if you bear with me for just a second. You said that with such a straight face is really <laughs> subtracting with kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, here is, uh, um, I guess, a, a document that was put out. And I guess there's some schools that are really buying into this. And so, you know, there's starting to be a little pushback. But uh, if you say a pathway to equitable math instruction, dismantling race racism in mathematics, and uh, as they go down into the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, basic, uh, I guess you'd call it the summary, uh, you know, they actually talk about, you know, uh, it's crazy, uh, critical approaches to dismantling white supremacy in mathematics Indeed. classrooms yes. by visualizing toxic characteristics of white supremacy culture with respect to math. I mean, I've never this, heard of that word, visualizing. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, Every, right there. Yes, that, I think they're trying to introduce some kind of equity into English as well. Visibilizing? I, have you ever heard of that word? <laughs> well, apparently, you may be introducing some racism into English. I think so. I think you're <laughs> right. so yes. 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 Maybe you're holding them to account, which, you know, this is a sad thing, though, to me, is that mathematics is, is the gateway for all kids. I mean, that's the gateway to a better life. You know, you do mathematics and that opens the door to so many disciplines yes. uh, that are, you know, that go, uh, you know, quite frankly, we import a lot of engineers in the U.S., which is, is crazy. I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm for open borders, but, you know, the idea that we have to is just crazy. You know, that I mean, we have, uh, you know, the some of the most wealth per capita in the history of the world, you know, I mean, our society, uh, you know, we may not, I'm not sure that we're number one at the moment, but, you know, we've certainly been up there for the last century or so. And the idea that we're having to call math racist and second guess it, not be able to teach it very well in our schools is, is just a real condemnation of our education system. And it really makes you sad because, you know, if kids just, uh, you know, learn math. Oh my gosh. I mean, that would be the great equalizer to get, you know, so many kids to break poverty cycles and everything else and be able to just get uh, access to all these good jobs. But I don't want to monopolize well, the conversation. We so we had to go to the Caribbean to get Leon. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm, I'm one of the important engineers. Um, Jason was speaking about That's right. Right? <laughs> as, as a matter of fact, as a, as a matter of fact, I got my, um, my permanent residency because I was an engineer at the time. Petroleum engineers was was in great demand, and um, um, the old company that I was working for they 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 helped me get my permanent residency because I was an engineer, a petroleum engineer. So yeah. yes, I'm one of the important two, Jason. Okay, but, <laughs> but <laughs> we're happy to have you. <laughs> <laughs> I I hope I hope everyone agrees with that statement, but sometimes I have doubts. But <laughs> but it's good, it's good. No, but this this thing here. Notice where this this um this whole program notice where they go for their salvation white supremacy you know uh, a while ago 
George George Bush, the, I'm, I'm talking about the second one. He said that our, there are standards that we are setting for black and brown children. This he, I'm paraphrasing his words. We are seeing nothing but a soft bigotry of low expectations. We are now looking at our education system. We are totally dismantling it. And we're going to replace it with these equitable things that are going, that are going to take us to this educational utopia. But the thing that nobody could never answer, one and one equal to two in every language, every culture, every country, how could you then say there's any sort of bias, any sort of ethnic or racial bias in mathematics? Calculus is the same everywhere. I first learned calculus in a foreign country, foreign to this one, the land of my birth, Trinidad. I have taught calculus and other forms of mathematics to people from nearly everywhere in the world. And to this day, I've never had one student tell me, you know, Mr. Brathwaite, when we are home, we just do it a little bit differently. We just get different answers. We have different methods that work. I have never had a student tell me this. Mathematics is the same wherever you are. It's a universal language. But these idiots who are now running our public education is now trying to make us into dumb asses. That's not, well, not us, our children, into dumb asses. That's what they're trying to do. It's a bigotry. It's a soft bigotry of low expectations. That is what is going on in our public schools. And we need a vaccine for that. And we need it soon. <laughs> Dang, I, sometimes I wonder if Leon practices th these speeches <laughs> in the mirror because he delivers them so perfectly well. It's like I, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm mumbling and stumbling and bumbling, and Leon is just like, wang, bang, there you have it. I love it. it. It's it's been a it's been a passion of mine for a long time, Tim. So you I know, can I've, tell. I've, I've I've spoke version of these words on many occasions, yeah. but even prior to prior to the show we we, we have here. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to add anything to, because it's just going to be worse by far. <laughs> it's no way I could compete with you, that you one. Silenced our screaming eagle. Yes, <laughs> That's the last did. word. Yeah, yeah. Which he, he, in case you haven't noticed, he does this on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> no man, don't say that, man. Come on. You do. You do. I mean, you know, I'm. I'm Half the time it was like, dang, that was so awesome. I just don't even want to, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, let me then uh, uh, take us yeah. a little deeper into the subject. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, there was a, a, a great example of this bigotry of low expectations, you know, and, and I mean, essentially our, our schools right now are, uh, you know, UC is trying to, I guess, figure out another metric than looking at the SATs and I guess the PSATs as the entrance, um, you know, uh, metrics to try and gauge whether or not a student uh, has, has met the level to be able to go there, you know, and stuff. This is, um, you know, it's sort of just crazy, you know, instead of looking at the finish line and seeing how people are doing, try to figure out why people aren't doing well in the race to begin with, you know, instead of just, you know, uh, trying to change everything to the finish line. A great example of somebody who did that is Jaime Escalante. So Jaime Escalante, they made a movie about him. Uh, it's uh, back in, the, I think, the late 80s, early 90s. It I think called... it was like 88 or, 88 or 89. Yeah, and it was called Stand and Deliver. And so he was in and I'm, I'm actually going to bring up a, uh, a little... Um, screen share here so that we can uh, uh, just get a sense of that. So um, <clears throat> he was a teacher and back in 1982, he went into uh, one in the early 80s, he went into a school in East LA. And this is a picture of Jaime Escalante right here. And yeah. it was a place where they didn't even teach calculus because that was the bigotry of low expectations that they had in that school. And it was mostly, uh, you know, Hispanic kids going to that school. And he thought, you know, the way to turn this school around is I'm going to I'm going to raise the standard. I'm going to have higher expectations. And by 1982, he had 18 kids 
pass the uh, uh, the calculus, uh, uh, the, the AP calculus exam, you know, which yeah. is one of those exams to help you get into college uh, that they can grant. So instead of sitting there and trying to jigger the metrics so that, you know, uh, essentially say, well, gosh, we don't have enough people who look like this getting into college. He said, hey, look, w- you know, we can do this. We don't need you to change the finish line. <clears throat> we are going to put running shoes on these kids <laughs> and help them exactly. cross the finish line. And he raised their expectations. And he said, you know, you've got to have Ghanis, you've got, which is desire. You know, he said, you've got to, uh, you know, that's what you need here, you know, if you want to succeed. And he got these kids, 18 the first, uh, you know, in, in 1982. And they suspected he was cheating because they, that, that was the bigotry of low expectations they had. They yes. said, oh, well, 18 brown kids, you know, passing calculus. They must be cheating. No, they didn't. And they retook the test. And I think they did better the second time. <laughs> he took the test. And it's just crazy. And then eventually he had over 72 kids in that school taking the test and and passing it you know and i mean just an incredible story of raising the bar and if you if you uh, would certainly recommend the movie it's uh, got james uh, edward almost plays jaime escalante but a really great movie and it's uh, one you should check out but the the bottom line is that you know it, Perfect example. Somebody in real life who did this. I, I think he won some award for teacher of the year and he eventually went and taught in Sacramento as well later yeah. on. But the bottom line is, you know, we can do this. We don't need to to imagine there's racism in mathematics or in calculus. We just need to get in there and do the work. And, you know, quite frankly, I think competition would help a lot toward getting kids there as well. But you guys have some thoughts on stand and deliver and Jaime Escalante? Well, I, I, James almost also won an Academy Award for that movie. Mm. I mean, so, so everything that it touched uh, was, uh, you know, was phenomenal. And yeah, this is what we need. We don't we don't need to um, lower the bar or move the goalposts farther apart, you know, until they're, you know, one goalpost is on the far end uh, up against the stands and the other ones in the other end up against the stands and you just can't miss. We don't need to do that. We need to, you know, get people out there kicking field goals and practicing over and over and over and over until they get better at it. And that's, that's just, just what this is. This is, this is just pure laziness. And if the country continues down this uh, path, which it looks like it's going to do, especially with the Democrats almost, you know, <laughs> trying to pack the court and get unlimited power, absolute power, um, you know, then we're just, we're doomed as a nation, uh, frankly. If we if we go this path, we are doomed as a nation. So what, what do you say, Leon? You know, for many of these kids, you know, black and brown kids in particular, for many of these kids, education is the one tool they have to better their lives. To, to live a life better than their parents did. And what we have going on right now is these idiots who are running these school districts around the country, destroying that, especially for black and brown children, the people who need it the most. And this is what's going on right now. And you talk about, we are doomed. We are not educating the next generation. We are not. And if we are not educating the next generation, oh, if we want to teach them about um, economic justice, oh yeah, that's a good thing. You want to teach them about climate change? Oh, that's a good thing too. You want to teach them about racial justice? Oh, that's wonderful. But how about reading, writing, and arithmetic? You don't think you should teach them something about that? That might be a good idea, you know. But these idiots who are running our public schools are doing nothing but destroying the lives of generation after generation of young kids. That's what they're doing. They're creating this nice, wonderful pipeline, okay? You get out of high school, and they get on welfare, or you get out of high school and end up in prison. That's what they're doing. Yeah. And that pipeline is overflowing right now. Overflowing right now. But I hope, I hope that the one good thing that is going to come out of this pandemic, you know, a lot of the pandemic and the actions by our government was horrible, plain and simple. There's no doubt about that. But I hope the one good thing that comes out of this thing is that it will show parents where the sympathies of the teachers' unions lie. It's not with your kids. It's not with your children. They don't care about that. They care about the power and the salary that they get from teaching, supposedly teaching your children. Well, that's, that's so I hope we we'll develop alternatives to the public education that is going ongoing in, in present-day America. 
Well, and that's a great segue into the next part of the topic because, uh, you know, teachers unions, what did they do? I mean, they constantly tell us it's all about the kids, right? And, yes. you know, what did they do, you know, when, when this all happened? Well, they took off and left the kids high and dry for over a year, you know, without, uh, you know, in-person education, with untried systems of, you know, online education. And I mean, you know, they, if, if we had a competitive system, you know, this wouldn't have happened. But because we right. have a monopoly, whatever the monopoly wants to do, well, hey, we, you know, we all don't feel safe. So we're going home. We'll see you later. Uh, you know, it's all about the kids, but not today. That's about us. And we'll see you later. <laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> and I mean, it's a, kid, a year of these kids' lives. And I mean, the, 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 uh, to, just to show you, you know, what a, a terrible, uh, incentive that it was or, or reasoning it was for the uh, teachers unions, you had the uh, LA teachers union literally telling us that uh, what they want to see before they come back is defunding the police. I, what on earth does that have to do with yes. them leaving because of COVID? I mean, yes. I, I, it's like, my God, I can't believe it. You know, and, and if this doesn't pull the blinders off people's eyes about what, you know, these corrupt monopoly of this government delivered education is, I don't know what will. I mean, this is True. crazy. Uh, you guys have any any thoughts on the teachers union? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> just, just the, the part about that last part you said, you know, what, what's going to get people to lose faith in the government answer to everything, including education, but let's just say education, nothing. Well, it doesn't matter what, what happens. It, it hasn't mattered over the past, uh, since the Department of Education in the federal government has been enacted, the, the precipitous drop in test scores and, and the, the huge amounts of money that uh, has been siphoned off in, into the Department of Education at the same time. So more money, the worse scores. Uh, you know, if that didn't do it, uh, I don't think this will. So I'm I'm pretty um, bearish on that idea. I'm I'm pretty much a pessimist in thinking that uh, you know liberals that just apparently love this kind of stuff are, are you know they're going to be just you know um, cheering on um, more of this kind of nonsense, uh, you know, and thinking that it's great. And no matter what happens, it won't change their mind. You know, you know, Tim. I hope, I hope to God you are wrong on that point. Okay, honestly, yeah. because just seriously, we we need for something to change. Honestly, especially in the urban centers of America, we really do need something to change and change soon. Because really and truly, in the inner cities, education, public education, is on its knees and accomplishing nothing for for the for the kids that are supposed to be educating. So I hope to God the COVID. That one good thing will come out of, of, of the pandemic. But, you know, I, I see a point. You know, I see a point about this monopoly and its, its, its reaches into our, into our lives and where our zip code have become the main determinant of where we should go to school. I mean, that is such an idiotic idea. I can't believe it has survived this long in the United States of America. I can't believe it, but it has survived. And the teachers' unions are now using it to their advantage. But I hope to God that the pandemic have opened a few people's eyes. Enough people have seen what these teachers' unions are doing to our children. I hope to God that we are seeing it and we're going to take action against it. I hope so. I pray for it. You know, there's um, uh, some good articles recently, too, from I think the Wall Street Journal had one and Brookings put out, uh, um, I guess, a study or a paper as well. Uh, talking about this, but it, essentially they're analogizing the COVID pandemic and all of the upheaval that that's caused with Hurricane Katrina. And they said, you know, yes. in Hurricane Katrina, you literally had the, you know, all of these people left. So the districts were wiped out. And when people came back, they wound up having to have kind of a, a regime of school choice. I mean, they, they just had True. to try a lot of new stuff to get the schools back up and running and a lot of, you know, kids to be able to go where they needed to go to, to get to school. And, and so that, that's something where I guess they're, they're, they're hoping maybe that <clears throat> there's a hope that a lot of people are, have been upended by this uh, you know, I, I hate to say pandemic because it's really the government lockdown is, you know, yeah. what what caused the chaos. It's not, yeah. you know, it, it's certainly the pandemic. I'm not saying COVID isn't real, but I'm saying that the government's choice to address that by a lockdown yes. was a choice. And um, but it, but anyways, uh, the 
the issue of of being able to choose I, I i personally know quite a few families who've moved out of the school district that i'm in to go to a different school district uh during this time there's been a lot of kids who've been opting for uh, uh what do you call it um uh, homeschooling instead yes. of the district's crash course in distance learning <laughs> i mean literally yeah. where you know teachers don't even know what to do they're just people watching each other on zoom you know, trying to discipline each other I mean, it's kind of crazy but uh you know it, it's it's but it's, it just seems crazy i mean with brick and mortar monopoly with no competition for literally generation after generation after generation where else do we get so little innovation in society public schools i mean it's crazy where, where, wherever wherever the government control we're going to have little innovation but the point is though but the point is though we should have options that's what it is we should have options whether it comes through school choice, which is which I think would be great if we can do that, where we take the, the education budget as it is. I mean, you know, I think it's, it's a fair statement to make that maybe we as libertarians would prefer that the government wasn't involved in education to the extent that they are. Fine, I could accept that point, but they are involved. But if they are involved, just take the money, make it into vouchers, give the vouchers to parents, and let the parents decide. They could go, they, they, they decide other things for their. The, the kids, don't they decide what, what, what we eat? Don't they decide what time I go to bed? Uh, well, when I was a kid, probably my wife still determined some of that. No, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the point is, though, but the point is, though, the parents can determine the best interest of the child. Now, I would see if, in that, in the, if we have a portfolio of, of choices, if, for instance, maybe a parenting they could do some kind of thing at, at home and they could use some sort of online resources to, to educate their, their, um, their child fine. But they should not be limited to this public school that is not doing anything anyway. They should not be limited to that based po solely upon their, 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 their zip code. It's a real travesty. It really is. Well, you know, it's funny. Hoover had a funny little analogy to this, too. They made a little video that's a kind of a cartoon. But imagine if you had to get your food, you know, because, I mean, what's more important than education? Well, certainly eating every day is pretty right. darn important. So imagine that, that, well, I guess we have to have government cafeterias everywhere and everybody needs to go based on their zip code. That's how you'll get your food yeah. every day. <laughs> I mean, imagine what a change that would be. But, you know, I mean, it's the same kind of mentality, the idea that you can't decide what things are more important in, in to focus your education on than the government can. You know, the idea that they want to make sure, you know, you get the right, uh, you know, ideas. And of course, these ideas now are all these ideas about others, racism and math. Yeah, yeah could you imagine that. Terrible. Yeah, imagine, math. Yeah. You know, I mean, imagine if they did have the cafeterias, maybe we'd be, you know, getting... Yeah. who knows, uh, you know. No. Yeah, well, no, if they had the cafeterias, the cooks, would, when the pandemic hit, the cooks would go, hey, we're out of here. We're going home. We're not essential. <laughs> yeah, you, guys, you guys are on your own. Uh, well, no, actually, you guys, they'd shut them down. The government would close them down. You know, you know, eating is not no longer essential. And of course, there, there, <laughs> there would be this, uh, you know, this... Um, a scramble to find an alternative, but but without the uh, the pri free market having alternatives like we have now, where we go into a grocery store and we look upon shelf upon shelf upon shelf, it's like you know, send me to the store and okay, you tr try. I have to get an item, but I have to take a picture of it and six other items that are the same but with a different flavor and a different style and one's one's crunchy and one's smooth and one's this and one's that it's like there's so much it's it's uh, because of private enterprise sure and that would be the way it would be in in education there if it if education was private there'd be gobs of it all over the place yes. every different style and if you wanted your kid to study ballet in school while you were at work they would study ballet and they would study uh, sports and they would learn how to shoot a gun and they do everything would, would happen there. Music. Well, it, 
it, it's gotten Dude. to the point where it's a tired cliche too that people come from another country and they see our grocery stores you know and they can't imagine the number of choices that are there yeah. even to the point where the president of russia thought that our grocery stores were propaganda when yeah. he saw them he couldn't believe it was real <laughs> he thought it was some kind of stuff they do in their yeah. central planning <laughs> oh yeah yeah but, but anyway it's time to get on to our knucklehead noise patrol and this time it's racism 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 again it's all racism all the time and it has to do with the uh recent police shooting of teenager uh uh, Makia Bryant, uh, and she was shot by the police um, when they responded to a call that said, hey, there's somebody running around here with a knife trying to stab people. <laughs> and the police officer literally within nine seconds of getting out of his car, there was one person struggling on the ground and this teen had a knife out and was yelling, I'm going to stab the F out of you. B <laughs> yes. okay. And literally she was in the motion of taking that knife that looked like it was over six inches and she was about to plumb and plunge it into another teenager right, yeah, the yeah, the videos, yeah the videos online that show her with the knife reaching yeah back ready to go to yeah yeah but, but the, the police officer literally he had his gun out and he shot her it, four times she she died uh but also nobody got stabbed and nobody else died and i mean that's quite frankly what a policeman is supposed to do when he arrives on the scene and somebody's about to kill somebody else he's supposed to stop the threat i mean that's of course the, yeah yeah but, 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 but let me read to you a few of the crazy statements that have come out about this because this is the type of world we're in right now so the white house jen Psaki, she said so our, when she heard about it it wasn't about well thank god he stopped that kid from being stabbed to death it was so our focus is on working to address systemic racism and implicit bias head on, and of course, passing laws and legislation that will put much needed reforms into place at police departments around the country. That was their response to this incident. Mm -hmm. um, uh, LeBron James tweeted out a photo with a cop and he said, you're next. <laughs> Yeah. And then uh, uh, critical race theorist Ibram X. Kendi, where all this cancer is really coming from, you know, that people can't even have a sane conversation about math anymore. <laughs> That's where all this is coming from. Uh, he says, so when I look at that video, I ask myself if that would have been a 16 year old white girl in a wealthy suburban neighborhood, would the police officer have sought to disarm the girl? Would the police officer have sought to talk her down? Nine seconds. The police officer literally Nine had seconds, yeah. no time before somebody was about to stab somebody to death in a call where he'd been called. I, I, sorry, I've eaten up most of your guys' time. You guys have anything to say about that? I, I just wish these idiots will just stop trying to save us, especially us black people. I really wish. They'll just stop trying to save us. Because, you know, the headline should have been with that, with that, with that police officer who shot that girl. The headline should have been, police officer save young black girl. That's what this headline should have been. Not that, not, not that is not what we see now. Now we're hearing about, oh, violence against black people. Violence against black people? This girl was about, I was about to murder this, this, this young girl and we, we were supposed to do nothing about it? God help us. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, uh. <laughs> well, <laughs> we only have uh, high time. I think you said it all. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I think the bottom line is this critical race theory just doesn't add up, and that's the end of our show today. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you at the next one. Thank you for listening to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast, a production of Libertarian Counterpoint. Watch our shows on Channel 17 on Monday at 5:30 and Thursday at 7:30 p.m. each week.